Hey, welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we have the 2020 Ford F250 Super Duty with the 7.3 gas engine and the 10 speed automatic. <clears throat> this truck did not come with an MSRP, but I'll go ahead and build it online. The pricing for the 2020s is out now, obviously. Uh, when this truck was originally built for the media, the uh, pricing had not been released so I'll build that I'll put that number up on the screen at the end but uh, anyway this is the lariat trim it's pretty nicely equipped it's got all the leather interior heated and cooled seats no heated steering wheel but plenty of options more than you need most likely and overall it's a really great truck I've enjoyed driving it this week that 7.3 gas has a lot of torque it almost feels like a diesel when you're empty because it shifts at like 2000 rpm there's so many gears there that it can uh, stay efficient and stay you know shift early with that amount of torque um, we'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen but this truck's a beast i love the color too i'm not one for bright colors but this blue i, I really do like and as you can tell it's kind of a more of a road going one uh, it's got smaller tires and got that big chin spoiler on the front and just pretty low overall compared to other super duties but it still has the four-wheel drive package with the locking rear differential um let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at the engine here and just to show you the fog lights Can be on without the headlights being on those are just the running lights obviously and there's that big 7.3 liter gas engine and without all the diesel emissions it's easy to get into there you can see all the coil packs here on top of the spark plugs it's just really open and easy to get in there to work on it this one does come with the two and a half inch receiver instead of the three inch I think the three inch is overkill still. We aren't, we're, we're, these trucks are not up to that amount of weight yet. Normal seven pin plug, and then your trailer camera plug there. Go ahead and pop the tailgate, which you can also do from inside. It has the step, easy enough. And then up in here, another seven pin and the other camera mount as well All right here's the button to turn the lights on and off in the bed um, gooseneck setup there or fifth wheel either way and then it has these nice tie downs this is the short bed so the long bed um, you can still i mean get all these options in the short bed or the long bed but i like if you look at the center line this point the center mounting point is just be in front of the rear axle the mirrors so if you're pulling a trailer you can push that button to extend or retract the mirrors um, and it does not have adaptive cruise control which is fine again but uh, like i said this is the lariat trim it's not the top end but it has a ton of features right here these are the mirror lights you can't see them right now but they they're underneath the mirrors and they light up the ground and towards the back as well so they do a pretty good job of lighting up the side of the truck and then with the bed lights on you can light up pretty much everywhere fog lights cargo light these are the headlights put that back to automatic and that's to dim the dash electronic adjustable pedals and that button drops the tailgate over here the engine start stop four wheel drive cool thing about fords is you can lock the rear differential by pulling that out in two wheel drive that actually locked it you can see the yellow marker jump up on the screen there trailer brake controller um, you can adjust your gain there this it does not light up you can't even see this i'll turn on my phone light but right here is the trailer brake controller and you see the plus and minus as i can cover and uncover those um and that's for the uh trailer brake controller and without having that lighted at night it's kind of hard to see so if you had to make an emergency stop 
without knowing where it was. If you weren't used to it, it would be an issue. Most people will be just fine, but it is something that maybe, now that you can see it there, that Ford could put maybe some lights on the end of those. Not a huge deal. Just something interesting when I was originally looking for it. I couldn't see it. There, so. this is the Pro Trailer backup. Um, I have used that before. I believe I did a video on the F-150 with that. I'm not sure I ever posted that, so maybe I'll post that video. Um, wireless charging, and it has a couple USB charging ports, like I said, heat and cooled seats. Um, plenty of information, lane uh, keep assist or whatever. Here's your cameras. So it does have the surround view camera, and you can adjust, there we go. You can show the beds for when you're backing up and hitching up, but while you're driving, you cannot bring the cameras up, so you can't see that. And then that plus sign is you can add the additional camera to go in the trailer. This is when you're off-roading or whatever, you can see in front of you really well. And of course, the surround view. Um, and that's looking forward, put it in reverse. That'll switch to the reverse one. And you can um, zoom in for your hitch right there. There's one 10 volt outlet there. And so this truck is big as well. It's about as big as the Sequoia that I had a couple weeks ago. Um, but I can reach across if I try the Sequoia. That was really hard, but here's the big difference. So in the Sequoia, I cannot reach these dials. And you know, the dash, the touch screen, I had to lean way over to reach it. This is with my seat all the way, or my back all the way back in my seat, and I can reach everything here. So that is a big help. Um, before moving to the back seat, um, it's got the cup holders that you can adjust over here. So you have four or just two. Um, this bottom is hard plastic, not a big deal. I had actually this camera that I'm holding, I set it in there and it rattles around a little bit. I would prefer this rubber, so there's a rubber pad on here. If they had that same kind of material, that would be a little bit nicer. This truck does beep and honk at you for everything. It's kind of annoying there, but that's all right. So here, 12 volt, 110, and two USB, USB-C, uh, and then the regular USB. And that's about it for the back seat. There's not a whole lot going on back here um, center armrest cup holders pop out and then your lights up here so it's pretty basic back here but look how much room I have so that's my driving position I have like uh, at least a foot of room there there's a ton of space and this does have the seats that fold that's the goosenecks hitch stuff I haven't seen this newest one but yeah it's the same as the one before uh, one nice thing you don't have to go to the other side so when you flip that lever you can see the other side moves and then this whole thing will fold but there's stuff in there right now so I'm just gonna leave it these were the lights I was talking about on the inside those project back and there is a camera right there Hold this seat down. Probably getting a lot more footage than I need here. So let's go ahead and get an exhaust note. So it doesn't actually let you rev it all the way up. That was about 3,000 RPM. That's all it lets you rev to when you're in park. Just doing the fuel mileage run here. I wanted to show you guys the automatic high beams. Of course, I'm going through a tunnel right now, so you're not gonna be able to see it. But these have been working really well. Some of the systems I've used, uh, the high beams, automatic high beams don't work great. But so far on this 2020, I've really enjoyed leaving it on. Most of the time I just turn the system off. I mean, it, it still does flip off and on more than I would have it do. There you go, they flip back on right after that car was gone. Um, because right now I don't need my high beams on. I can see, I don't even, I mean, I can see without my headlights. Uh, it's more for a safety thing at the moment. But you see that they, they respond very quickly. They flip on and off almost right away. It might be too light outside now for them to flip back. There we go. 
and yeah they just worked great uh, overall this truck has a pretty smooth ride I mean, it is a three-quarter ton so the capacities are a little bit lower I'll throw the um, all the ratings up on the screen at some point in the video but uh, you can feel the back ends a little stiff with it driving around empty but the front end feels quite smooth and this seems to be more of a road going model even though it has the four-wheel drive with the locking rear differential the tires are really small for compared to what you can get you can get almost like a 34 inch on the regular trims in the tremor you get a 35 inch tire these ones are about 31 maybe just a little bit bigger than 31 so uh, but anyway it seems to be really smooth and quiet we're cruising at 60 miles an hour right now and it's just going right along no problem this is the 7.3 gas and with this 10 speed transmission uh, I was expecting it to be searching for gears a lot more um, we're on a decent grade right now this is probably gonna get up to six percent or so and it will likely downshift but a lot of these I don't have to downshift on um, I bet it's just gonna drop me up and then it drops two gears at a time typically so it'll drop down into eight um, I misunderstood this transmission it seems to stick to when it skip shifts it stays with even numbers or odd numbers so one three five is a common one when you're starting out it'll start out first gear shift to third shift to fifth um, and then when it downshifts it tends to go ten eight six if you really get on it it might drop down in the fourth but instead of like a dual clutch transmission it goes even to odd so you can skip shift from like first to fourth or something um, but with this transmission it seems to stick to the same odd or even in instead of switching between the two <laughs> so again 57.6 miles and then we use 3.94 gallons of gas for a total of 14.7 miles per gallon with a 7.3 gas engine from Ford uh, that's not too bad the Chevy with empty with a 6.6 gas we got 15.6 if I remember correctly so directly after finishing the empty fuel mileage run we did the loaded fuel mileage run this is a 12,500 pound trailer and we towed it over that same route all right so real quick I wanted to show you the transmission gears there so just to the right of the tachometer it has the 1 through 10 right now 9 is highlighted 8 is highlighted it just shifted um, so one thing that Ford does is it shows you what your gear you're in all the time. And I love that with a 10 speed, it's kind of fun to watch. I mean, the, the practicality of it is you can switch it to manual mode at any time, know where you are, how many gears you can go up or down. Um, but the other trucks like Ram, you have to uh, hit the manual mode button, I believe, to bring it up. And then with Chevy, you actually have to change a gear in manual mode to be able to see what it does. So. Right now I'm in tow haul mode, so it's going to use pretty much every gear and going to hold on to it longer. And uh, so far, I really enjoyed towing with this truck. This is 12,500 pounds that I'm towing right now, and I have about the right amount of weight for it. You could probably go up another 3,000 pounds at most and be comfortable, which is I'm not 100% what this truck is rated for. I'll put it up on the screen, this specific model. Um, but it is doing just fine. So it, a lot of times half tons, yes, there are half tons rated to tow 12,000 pounds, but that's really pushing it for them. This thing handles 12,000 pounds, no problem. And I've always kind of thought that if you're gonna tow over about eight or 9,000 pounds, might as well just move up to a three quarter ton. You should have a lot stronger drivetrain and powertrain last you a lot longer. And in this thing, it really shows, but where it hurts, is that gas mileage so you can see right there getting 6.7 currently we'll see what it gets at the end of this uh, fuel mileage run that's been uphill granted we'll see when we go downhill if that changes drastically or not but uh, we're still on the uphill portion of the loop um, but anyway the that is the one benefit to the half tons especially those half ton diesels you can get really pretty good gas mileage out of those even when towing they still have pretty high tow ratings but really if you're gonna to be towing a lot towing often and over 
eight or nine thousand pounds maybe ten thousand pounds and above is a good cutoff um, it's still smart to move to a three-quarter ton or a one-ton truck if you're towing real heavy all right so all the new trucks do this as well um, but we're about to be going down a steep hill and wanted to show you the grade braking so I have the cruise set um, thought I had it. there we go 55 um, that's the speed limit here and we've got one more little spot here flat uh, maybe a tiny bit uphill and then we'll drop down and you can watch the transmission downshift and RPMs will go up and it'll help hold the speed so I'm trying to use it with cruise control only and let the truck do all the work there have been a few times where I still had to hit the brake it does not have an exhaust brake or anything it's not a diesel it doesn't have a turbo to do the exhaust brake so uh, there is that it's not going to hold you back as well as a diesel engine would but so here's the drop starting to go downhill now Let's drop down into fifth gear fourth gear you can see the rpms going up as we go we're still gaining in a little bit of speed we're at 62 like i said i have it set at 55 um, but it did pretty well so the gas engine also both the low end and the high end so if you're um, going down a hill it tends to go above your set cruise control more and then if you're going uphill it takes a little bit a little bit longer for it to react to the uphill climb than the diesels do uh, i think that's a lot of that's the torque for the uphill part this gas engine is still at 475 foot pounds of torque that's a pretty powerful and it still does really well but of course the diesel with more than double that um, no problem doesn't have to change gears even accelerating up some of these hills and then going downhill you get the exhaust brake on the diesels and on the gas you don't so you tend to have a, a wider range when you set your cruise control with the gas engine than you do with the diesel engine so at the end of the fuel mileage run pulling the 12,500 pound trailer we averaged 8.35 miles per gallon and the computer was reading 8.2 uh, it was kind of interesting that the computer was actually reading lower than what the real fuel mileage was and most of the time you'll see that they read a higher fuel mileage than what you're actually getting so that was good to see and that fuel mileage roughly compares to the chevy 6.6 .6 liter gas engine and the ram 6.4 liter hemi uh, both of those were between eight and nine miles per gallon when towing roughly the same amount of weight Thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2020 Ford F-250 Lariat with the 7.3 liter gas. We had a great time with this truck. Surprisingly capable off-road. Can't wait to try out the Tremor package, but this thing did great as is and did really well towing. Um, of course, not gonna compete with a diesel in towing, but for most people, they don't need a diesel.